Hello everybody, welcome back. It's Jeremy here with Touch of Class Creations. Thank you for joining us. Tonight I'm gonna to do a video on sublimating a tumbler in a Cricut mug press. Yes, it can be done. I can't say it's the most efficient way of doing tumblers. Uh, you have to cook it about four times. However, since I've started doing tumblers, which I haven't done a lot, but I've had a constant seam issue. I don't know why I've bought wraps. I've bought the sublimation shrink wrap. I've bought a million things and I just, I still can't seem to get my seams right. So I did adjust my seam down a, a hair smaller to make my paper just a little bit smaller with not so much overhang. But um, I thought, you know what? My wife's been wanting a Cricut mug press. I thought, let me go ahead and buy me a Cricut mug press and see if I can make a tumbler with that. I've seen a couple videos of people doing it and it seemed to work. So I was like, you know what? I just want to try it. My wife's been wanting a Cricut mug press anyways. So let me see if it works. So I did get a Cricut mug press um, and I had it for, I did about four or five tumblers in it and I broke it. I don't know if I cooked it too long. You know, those things aren't quite made to do tumblers. Um, they're made for mugs. The tumbler's a little small. I wrap mine with my sublimation um, shrink wrap thing that I bought to do tumblers that doesn't seem to work too well. Um, so, and it worked great. However, I ended up breaking the heat press. So maybe I did it too much. I cooked too many in a row. I'm not sure, but that's for a different story. Anyways, guys, if you are new to the channel, thanks for checking us out and subscribe to me if you haven't already. And guys, as always, if you enjoy what I like, hit the like button. If you're enjoying the video, if you thought it was good, just give me a like, thumbs up. And if you want to be notified anytime I release a new video, go ahead and hit the notifications bell. I'd really appreciate it. And if you like the video and you have someone that you think you would like to see it, share it for me. I'd love to be shared. I'd love to get new subscribers and new people to come in all the time. So without any further ado, let's get to it. I, in doing this video, when my Cricut mug press broke, I had done this tumbler and it was about three quarters of the way done and then the mug press broke and I couldn't finish this part. I tried to finish it in my stove, but it didn't come out well, not in my stove, but in my tumbler oven the way I normally do tumblers. So I said, you know what? I baked this image off, which I... That's going to go on the blooper clip. Which I... I picked this image off and I'm going to try and sublimate it in the Cricut mug press using a, a second use tumbler. So I made another video on this, I believe, definitely in TikTok. And I think I made a YouTube video on redoing these tumblers. So if I hadn't, I'm going to go ahead and include the stuff earlier. I'll still put it in anyway so you can see me cooking it off real quick as part of this video to get this tumbler ready to redo it and now I'm going to do it in a Cricut mug press. So let's get started. So I was making this tumbler in my Cricut mug press last night and it died on me right there. So I lost that corner. So as I've frequently done in these videos, I'm about to stick this bad boy in the oven at 400 degrees for approximately 40 minutes, maybe even 50 sometimes. Looking light, but let's just double check it. Oh yeah, it's definitely, definitely took a lot of that off of there now. It's completely clear there. But I'm probably gonna let it go. It's gonna lose my heat some. Probably gonna let it go for an extra 10 minutes. Well, we're gonna go an extra five minutes. guys I rinsed the cup off and cooled it off and you can see whatever those dark marks that were on actually got to dry it a little better but whatever the dark marks that we saw in there did cook off guys the gloves are because I have clammy hands my hands are always a little bit sweaty and whatnot so I found in dealing with sublimation paper when I'm trying to stretch it and, and get it on here nice and good and tight 
if I don't wear gloves, sometimes the perspiration from my fingers can even sink into the paper a little bit and cause little water spots. And I've noticed it through on stuff I've sublimated before. So, um, in case anyone's wondering, that's the purpose. Now, one thing too, when I was cooking this, the image off here, I took it out of the oven and turned it, which I normally don't do with my heat gloves on. And I just want to show you guys by doing that, which I don't recommend in the future if you cook something off, I left little marks. I don't know if that's going to come out on the camera right there. Right above my finger, there's little marks on Dre's face there. But so be careful if you're cooking your image off, don't move it in the middle. Or if you are, if your heat gloves have the sticky things on, be careful it doesn't stick to this. So, um, but clean your tumbler nice. Normally I don't touch these things. Of course, this I've used in a couple videos already today. And so it's a little, so clean your thing off, wipe off any fingerprints. Image. Now this image I'm going to try to wrap up and match at the seam so you can see where i had my seam before that's where i'm going to start Actually, let me pre-get my tape ready so now you guys in doing this i always get comments of people i, I like you guys to share things with me and i like you to share ways to do things and your way of doing things and i think us sharing with each other always makes us all stronger and better crafters however um, the way I do things isn't always the right way. It isn't always the best way. It's not always the most efficient way. Um, like my cups that I do, the cup video, if you guys have watched that. There's a million other ways you can do cups that are easier and more efficient, but that's just one way to do them. So I'm just showing people a way to do it, way things I do it. This is how I've found best to do my cups. I always like to have a piece that goes into the top. It goes over at least half an inch to an inch. Tight as you can around the top into the inside. And then same thing on the bottom. And then what is most crucial to your seam pressing your tape down you can see I don't know how well you can see in the camera but you can it's not the paper's not pressed down all the way almost see the ridge in there so I'm just going to rub the heck out of it and I use the back of my squeegee guys and I just go to town on the line making sure it is down first i usually run it over this way a couple times make sure don't go against your tape and pull off your tape but i'm talking about go over it go over it go over it and then when you think you've got enough go over it for another two minutes that is what's crucial to your seam is making sure that this is no gap and press down if you make sure that's pressed down without wrecking your paper make sure there's no air in there you won't get a ghost of a seam and it should be nice now watch i'm talking this shit and it's probably gonna be my worst tumbler yet but let's hope not. But I am still learning these. So in any event, the purpose of the vis this video isn't to show you how to do a perfect tumbler. I just go through all my procedures in all my videos because I like to make long videos. Not really, but I always make long videos because I over explain. So 
In any event, go the heck over this thing like crazy. Up and down and up and down. Okay, then take a long piece here. I start right at the seal. Hate having gloves on. So I start my tape. If you can see, and I've got it halfway over the top of the cup. And I pull it tight, and I go all the way around the cup. And this is why I always think I'm gonna screw my cup up because it always looks like there's a lot of excess room at the top of the paper. Wrap around. Take one more piece. In this case, that was way too long, but we'll be all right. Continue on and go all the way around. Okay. Once you do that, push it over as tight as you can. Fold it over. Fold it over. Fold it over as tight as you can. Then go around. Same thing on the bottom. Bam. One piece. Start right here. But boom. Fold it over, 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 fold it over. Then again with the squeegee, I'm going to go over the edges like crazy. pushing down your squeegee and you're pushing down sorry guys i don't know how much of that freaking video i just missed as i've been blabbing talking on my lap so hopefully it wasn't a whole shit ton but if it was crap ton my mouth is bad you're squeegeeing the heck out of these sides guys you're squeegeeing 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 yep. now Cricut Bug Press is, this thing's only this big, so I'm going to fold my parchment paper down. I want to wrap my parchment paper around the cup. So, the ink doesn't spread onto the Cricut. And the Cricut Mug Press on the bottom comes up and it has a ceramic thing because you're normally doing coffee mugs in there. So now that I think about it, I just did that mug probably upside down. But anyways, so I cover the bottom of this with parchment paper to make sure this doesn't burn. I don't know if it would burn in there. I've cooked these in the stove and this doesn't burn, but I've heard other people having it potentially burn on the bottom of that. So I'm covering it just to be sure. So anyways, now I do this with parchment paper usually, wrap these. I made it a little bit too short at the bottom. A to protect the press, like I said, and B just gives it an extra seal too, an extra coating, I think, for air tightness. Stop putting things on my lap. I'm used to doing it on my lap, but I roll it like this to get it. Try get it nice and tight. Pull on it, just grab a piece. I'm gonna do about three or four pieces of tape on here. You guys don't have to do this, but once again, you know, you 
You cover everything else with parchment paper and sublimation. Why risk getting ink onto your Cricut mug press? No sense in it. Use a little bit of parchment paper. You could probably just put it in there, but I prefer to wrap it. I think it less chance of it burning and all that extra nonsense. And just fold the bottom over. Long piece from that side. Over to that side. Top, don't really worry about. That's it. Now, myself, when you get to the mug press, this is the one other thing you're going to need. When you put these in the Cricut mug press and you press that clamp to close, and I'll show you as we go over there. Actually, let's move over there. All right, guys, so we're going to move over and get ready to put this thing in the Cricut heat press. Now, the mug press, when you push this down, 20 ounce skinny tumblers, too skinny to fit in there. This won't close all the way on it. So you're gonna need to find a way to, uh, something to wrap it or something to make it thicker. Now, move my camera back here, sorry. Now, let's move back over here. There we go. Now, I've seen people use cardboard. I've seen people use other things online. Um, I'm using my silicone wrap. I can put it nice and tight on here. And I think it adds me some extra, um, you know, some extra protection. So I'm going to put this thing on here, pull it tight, try and grab this and just pull it as tight as I can on here, and pull it around. If you don't have one of these, which a lot of people, you probably won't, um, you know, like I said, some people use cardboard, check out other videos. Um, you're going to have to find something, wrap it, wrap it in a bunch of paper towel, maybe, um, bunch of things you could think of to try and do maybe even a, a, a thin hand towel, possibly. Um, I'm not sure I, this works good. I've just recently, now I, I just bought this Cricut mug press, um, for my wife a lot, like I said, and I also wanted to try tumblers with it anyways. So, um, but I do see that they have new attachments now you can put to your heat press. For heat presses you already have, you don't have to buy a specific tumbler heat press that have the sleeves for the tumblers that are probably even better than this sleeve I bought. So there you go, I just wrapped my sleeve on there. So, ooh, my Cricut mug press just heated up. Now the Cricut mug press is made to do mugs. So you normally put a mug in here and it's going to cook for about five and a half to six minutes. Your tumbler, obviously, with the gap that's right here, your tumbler is not going to cook all the way. It's gonna cover three quarters of the way. It's not gonna be heating the side. So I cook these two sides, and obviously this is not long enough to fit the whole tumbler, so you have to cook the top and the bottom. So you're cooking this thing four times. You're gonna cook it, I cook it, four minutes this way then turn it four minutes that way flip it four minutes this way turn it back four minutes that way your mug press is not going to cook four minutes it's going to do your lights across the first time it might be about three and a half four minutes it's going to say it's heated then when you turn it it might do a minute and it's going to say it's heated so if it says it's heated and it's beeping you to, to to take it out just pop the thing open again and close it real quick and that should shut the light off and then you just have to keep your timer um and, and keep your time um the first time if the lights don't go off till about four four and a half minutes i'll leave it for about four and a half minutes maybe even five maximum but then each flip after that i'm trying to cook it around four minutes um let's just get it started so i'm going to put the thing in for the first time and close it down and it's going to start now your lights are going to go across if you're familiar with the mug press um, your lights come across the top here and usually when you're doing a mug it takes about six minutes and there's no actual timer on this thing it all specifically goes by those lights 
So if you're doing mugs, once it lights up, your thing's done. Obviously, you're not doing mugs, so what do you do? Well, first of all, these lights are probably going to heat up. When I was doing these three tumblers, they heated up in about four minutes, three and a half to four minutes. The thing would start beeping like you had to take it out. You have to literally open it and close it back down again or the heat will stop. Um, once you open and close it back down, usually the lights will flicker a couple times and then it shuts off. But as long as the light stays green, you know it's heated. Um, what I mean, the lights will flicker, the, the little five LED lights that light up, they'll just kind of shut off. But if this light, the power light stays green, then you know it's still cooking. And that's what you want it to do. And then you have to time it. I didn't even actually start my timer with this, so I need to go and get another thing to time it with. But um, four minutes exactly is what you want to do. Now, I don't know how long I was cooking this. I, I think I started that right. I'm trying to think. I'm looking at my actual clock on my phone now. I think I started right in about a minute. So I'm going at about three, two minutes right now. So I'm going to go grab my other watch real quick, guys, while this is cooking. Yeah. Like I said, for the first, there we go. So we're, I assume because I didn't start the timer, it's about four and a half minutes to maybe even five whole minutes. Um, so we're going to be good with that. So I'm going to flip it now. And all I'm doing is rotating this around and then dropping it back down in, close it back up. And it's 6.04, so at 10 minutes, I got to stop it. So now you can see in this case, because I flipped it, the lights are going up again. Now, what's going to happen is this thing will probably beep after about two minutes. And I'm just going to pop it open. Nope, you see the lights went off. So now I'm just watching my timer for four minutes and then turning it again. That's what you want it to do. As long as you see the green lights on, you know it's not powering off. If for some reason there was a problem, the green light would shut off and turn orange or your LEDs would be blinking. So I do not recommend doing multiple of these in a row. Once again, I did three of these back to back last night and I broke one of these Cricut mug presses. So these are made to do mugs, not tumblers. If you're going to use it for tumblers like I am, be careful and don't overdo it they work good you'll see when i'm done with this one hopefully as long as my tape job was good that it works well but you definitely don't want to overdo it i did a video earlier the first unveiling of the mug press and made a mug with it you can see it came out great if you didn't watch that video check it out i have done a couple of these tumblers already with the cricut mug press this is how it came out so you can see the mug press will actually press it good so anyways we are at about six seven eight two and a half minutes so of the four minutes of the cooking on the bottom then we'll flip it over and we'll do the top we're at four minutes now, flip it again. This is where you want to grab it out. You're going to rotate it and go upside down with it. And four more minutes, we're at 1040, so 1440. Super chipmunk mode. Now, because I flipped it and this side's cooler, you can see the lights are starting to light up again. We'll see if it goes through or if it shuts off. Sometimes it'll go through, but it lights up real fast. And then you have to open it and close it. Last four minutes at 14.55, so 
bad boy off. Thing is very hot guys. You see me touching it with my fingers. I mean it's coming out 400 degrees so this press is only set to go to 400. It's not really adjustable. Well it is adjustable. The Cricut Bug Press is adjustable but I'm not going to get into that today. There are ways you can adjust the temperature in there though so i'm just peeling my wrap off here now this is hot as hell guys as you know if you pull these things out even my heat glove gets hot on there i'm just using my fingernails to pull these tapes off though you see so it's not so hot Very hot. I don't want it to roll on me because I don't want to have to try and catch it with the off hand and then F my hand up. Put my second glove on for a minute just to try and peel this other tape off because these bad boys are definitely hot. So you just get all your tape off as you can tell. I'm just trying to peel it all out, get it all out of the edges here. And then I'm just gonna grab it. Probably can't grab it now, so I'm gonna grab it with my free hand. Oof. Oh, almost there, guys. One more little piece of tape. And then we get to see the final outcome of the Cricut Mug Press doing a tumbler. It's hot. Oh my gosh, guys. And I even hit my seam dead on. I was worried about air, but look at that shiz what the crap that may be my best one yet Ugh. not very perfect on the bottom but first off there's my seam right at the end of eminem's radio between easy and tupac's head that's the seam now i see maybe a hair of ghosting on tupac But other than that, you can't really tell that I cooked this over another one. It's not perfect, guys, but it's it's you know it's pretty good for cooking over another tumbler. Come on now, tell me that that ain't nice. I like it, I just like that image, guys. You see my little ghosting Tupac? I think I ghosted when I pulled it off at the end, if you guys saw that. That's what I think Jack Tupac's face right there, because you don't see ghosting anywhere else on there. You don't see any previous images. That in the background is supposed to be there. That's blown up, if you look at the paper. see they have a bigger image in the background of all that but Tupac's face ghosted and I think that's when I popped it off at the end because yeah it actually ghosted over my seam so Tupac's ghosting there was my fault peeling the paper and I normally don't do that but if you've seen it when I was peeling it it popped at the end and 
damn it that's what it does when it does that but look at that other than that guys i say all in all and i ain't burning this one off again so if i don't end up selling this mug at my show this weekend that i'm going to i'll probably keep it for myself because i freaking love it hot though i'm gonna go cool it down you guys, that was doing a tumbler in a Cricut mug press. Now, once again, I'm not the most efficient way of doing it, but you can see how I wrapped it. Even though I thought I effed it up and I did a bad wrap, it still turned out good. Even on the bottom, you can see, you know, you can see how I had it wrapped around the bottom. So there's, you know, it's slightly, maybe a little white in there, but. I think it's, you know, I think it's not bad, guys, for the bottom, for the way I wrapped it, for only being my fifth one and not being great with seams. I mean, that seam is killer. You can't even tell. Like, I actually nailed. That's the best seam I've done other than Ghost and Tupac's face at the end. I mean, crap. So, that's it, though, you guys. Um, making a tumbler with a Cricut mug press. You see, you can do it. Just other word of advice is don't overdo them with the mug press. Do one, shut it off, give it a few minutes, set up your next tumbler, then go back to it. That way you don't overburn it. Um, if you guys enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit the like button for me. I know you always got, I got those one or two people that are haters and are gonna hit the not like button. But if you enjoyed it, you think I did a pretty good job, hit the like button. Uh, if you aren't already a subscriber, please subscribe. I much appreciate it. Uh, hit the notifications bell to be notified anytime I release a new video. Go ahead and share the video. Thanks for tuning in, and we appreciate it. Once again, Jeremy with Touch of Class Creations. We'll catch you next time.